Welcome back, everybody, to the Seattle Sonics, my NBA franchise here on NBA 2K22. We've got a lot to do today going over the trade deadline, the All-Star break. We're going to play a game against the St. Louis Spirits, an NBA Finals rematch from a year ago, and then we're going to wrap up the regular season, get ready for the playoffs. This was probably one of my favorite episodes of the series. It was just really fun. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So as it stands now, we are seven games ahead of the Minnesota Timberwolves for the number one seed in the Western Conference. Barring any funny business for the rest of the way, we should be able to get that top spot in the Western Conference for a third straight season. Right now, the team is in a pretty good spot, nearing the trade deadline. Obviously, Oscar Javisielen and Buzz Wigington have been fantastic. We do have some unfortunate injury news. Towards the end of last episode, Josh Giddy suffered a knee injury that will likely end his regular season. He is expected to return sometime during the playoffs. We don't know when. It just says two to four months, and the playoffs starts in exactly two months, and it ends in exactly four months. So he is scheduled to come back at literally any point during the playoffs with our medical staff. I think that'll be sooner than later. So we're going to start off with the trade deadline today, and I really wanted to take a point to see which teams are going to be focused on selling, because I think that's the easiest way to figure out which players are on the move. As I look through the bottom of the standings and you see the worst five teams, you have the Royals and the Capitanes, which makes sense. They're both newer teams. You would expect them to be bad. But these other three, the Clippers, the Nets, and the Heat, are three of the oldest teams in the league. All of their best players are older veterans. All of the best teams in the NBA are led by young talent, and these older guys like Kevin Durant and James Harden, although they're still good players, they're not number one championship options anymore. So because of that, those are the three teams I'm going to be really focused on having sell at this year's deadline. The Clippers season got off to a pretty bad start when Kawhi Leonard tore his Achilles. They have two trade chips in Zach Levine and Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is going to Milwaukee to give them some more defense and another floor general. The Bucs have been one of the most pleasant surprises in the league this year. They own the Clippers' first round pick for what it's worth. So they're going to be sending the Clippers Chester Lemieux, a talented young point guard, along with a first round pick swap horse from the Pelicans or the Bucks. I think that's fair value for an older Ben Simmons who has lost some value. As for Zach Levine, he's averaging 32 a game. He's going to the Knicks who need more of a true perimeter scorer. The Knicks have a bunch of young point guards on their roster, so they're going to send Brooklyn White to the Clippers. He's six foot eight. He has a lot of length and athleticism. They will also be sending a one and a two. So the Clippers lose Levine and Simmons. They get two young guards, and they add two first-round picks. The Nets are going to be trading away Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal. KD is going to the Lakers, and Beal is going to the Grizzlies. A huge three-team deal here. The Grizzlies will be getting Beal in exchange for Ryan Wilcox, a talented young forward. Two first-rounders in three seconds. I know Bradley Beal is way more value than that in real life, but you got to keep in mind the Nets don't have much leverage. Neither do the Lakers, who will be sending DJ Jones, who's a good starter, Dax McCollum, Isaiah Iguodala, and three first-round picks. Again, you got to realize Kevin Durant is 37 years old, and he's not the same player he once was. Javon Carter is also going to the Lakers as well for roster size purposes. So the Lakers and the Grizzlies get better. Two of our biggest threats in the Western Conference. Not good news for us. As for the Miami Heat, they will be sending away Damian Lillard to the Spirits and James Harden to the Boston Celtics. Again, both of these players have lost some value. The Spirits will be sending away a couple young guys, Julius Powell and Alexander Falkenberg, along with two first-round picks. The Celtics will be sending Gear Hansen, Nick Claxton, and two more first-round picks. The Heat can focus on building around Johannes Kleba and Bam Adebayo. The Spirits add a true elite guard to join their core of Deo Nembenigba, Brennan Ingram, and Tyler Hero. And the Celtics get a go-to scorer in James Harden. So the two best teams in the Eastern Conference... Add future Hall of Fame guards. Those are the three big moves here for the trade deadline. We are not going to be making any moves. There just wasn't really a trade that I really wanted to make. I wasn't interested in any of those older players. And I would rather run it back with the core we have because that's what we did last year. We didn't make any moves at the deadline. And it worked out because we won the NBA Finals. I think not doing anything at the trade deadline could really work out in our advantage. This exact team won the championship last year, while all of these other teams in both conferences at the top have a bunch of moving parts that they have to figure out now. So we're going to simulate to the All-Star break, and I quickly learned that not doing anything at the trade deadline might have been a mistake. Lorenzo Lawson pinched a nerve in his back. He'll be out four to six weeks. He can play through it, but 
we're not going to force him to. I don't want to mess up his back. He's only 19 years old. So we really lose a lot of offense on the bench. The very next game, Buzz Wigginson, broken right hand. He is out four to six weeks. So we are without three of our six best players, Buzz Wigginson, Lorenzo Lawson, and Josh Giddy, for at least the next month. We did go 4-1 and one in that stretch, but I am quite concerned. I'm sure Oscar J. Basilin and Kyrell Story can carry the load, but we barely beat the Montreal Royals, for Christ's sake. It took us double overtime to beat them. Oscar J. Basilin scored 50 in one of these games. I'm pretty sure it was against the Bucks. That's how depleted we are. So as we now go through the All-Star Weekend, we start with the Rising Stars Challenge, in which we have one participant, Uzoma Chukwumereji for Team USA, even though he was born in Senegal. I don't know why he's on Team USA. Lorenzo Lawson certainly would have been able to play in this game, and he's obviously good enough, but since he's injured, he's not going to be able to. Team USA is on the right, Team World is on the left, and Team USA, with a great second half, ends up winning by 21 points. Armani Walker, the Heat, leads the way with 27 points. He's a most improved player candidate. Uzoma Chukwumereji was last on the team in points, but he did grab 12 rebounds. Uzoma's brother, Ikanu Chukwumereji, played for Team World. I don't know how you can have two siblings on different teams, but whatever. Now we get to All-Star Saturday night, starting with the three-point contest, in which our Oscar J. Basilin will look to defend his title. He won the three-point competition last year, and he's looking to do it again. It's a star-studded group with LaMelo Ball, Jalen Green, Fred Flame, Cade Cunningham, and Jason Tatum. Right before that game, Lorenzo Lawson's injury healed, so his four- to six-week injury took one week to get better. That's how good our medical staff is. So now we get to the three-point contest. Remember, All-Star Weekend is in Seattle this year, so Oscar is the hometown kid. LaMelo Ball will not be participating because he is injured and has been replaced by Sadiq Bey of the Orlando Magic. The other guys who were listed there obviously are participating. The hometown kid, Oscar J. Basilin, will kick it off with a loud ovation from the crowd. His Moneyball rack will be his second one. So we get started here. The 2026 three-point contest is underway. And Oscar J. Basilin is looking good early. He's greened a couple here on this first rack, looking to go perfect. Bang! Five for five. Now we get to the Moneyball rack. This is an important stretch here for Oscar, who's looking good so far. He still has not missed. 8 for 8. 9 for 9. How about 10 of 10? Now the green ball. This is for 4 points from way downtown. It's off the mark. Oscar Javis Seelan no longer perfect. He just missed one here from the top of the key. He was starting to cool down, but he's had 3 greens in a row. Not going to make it 4, but he does get that one to fall. The other 4-point shot. Bang! The bank is open as he hits it off the glass. Oscar J. Basilin is cooking. He's got plenty of time. There's no reason to think he won't make it through the entire round as he splashes the money ball. Oscar still has not missed the money ball yet in this round. Now in the corner. Can he finish off strong? Bang! Here's this one. Bang! The last one. Money ball. Going to wait until the buzzer sounds for 36 points. Oscar J. Basilin is good. 36 points in the first round of the three-point contest. For Oscar J. Basilin, who looked kind of angry after that. I don't know why. So now that'll bring us to the other contestants. Surely Oscar is going to make the final round. As we start with Sadiq Bey, who single-handedly has pretty much turned the magic from bad to pretty good. He ends up getting a solid score of 28. Not enough to beat Oscar, but it may be enough to move to the second round. Next up, we got Jalen Green of the Rockets. He made it far in the three-point competition last year, barely losing out to, of course, Oscar J. Basilin. We'll see how Jalen Green is able to shoot here. He gets a very solid score of 32, so Green has a great shot of moving on to the next round. In my opinion, Oscar's biggest competition here in the three-point shootout is Fred Flame of the Denver Nuggets. He might be the best shooter in the league right now. Of his 925 field goal attempts, 875 of them are from three this year. However, he would only score 27. He made both of his green shots, but it won't be enough to move on to the next round. Now we have Cade Cunningham of the Detroit Pistons. He has arguably been the MVP of the league this year, single-handedly carrying the Pistons to the five seed, even though they have probably one of the worst supporting casts in the Eastern Conference. He finishes with a 28, tied for third with Sadiq Bey. So we'll see if Jason Tatum can get higher than a 28, and if not, we'll have a two-way tie for that last spot between former teammates Sadiq Bey and Cade Cunningham. 
Jason Tatum starts on the money ball rack. He finishes with 29. So both Sadiq Bey and Cade Cunningham are eliminated. And we have our final three. Jason Tatum, Jalen Green, and Oscar J. Vasilin. Since Oscar did the best of that group, he will be able to go last after Jason Tatum and Jalen Green. So that way he knows what mark he has to be. Jason Tatum, who just went, will kick us off. Hopefully he's not too hot since, you know, he just shot. Tatum looking good here early. We'll see the mark that he ends up finishing with. And his score would be a 28. One less than his first round score. Not bad, but I've got to assume one of Jalen Green or Oscar J. Vasilin will do better than that. So that brings us here to Jalen Green looking for revenge on Oscar, not just for last year's three-point shootout, but also the Western Conference Finals last year, even though Oscar didn't play in the Western Conference Finals a year ago since he was hurt. Green finishes with a 30. That's the mark to beat here for Oscar J. Basilin, who is going to wrap up this three-point contest. This time for the Moneyball Rack, he's going to save it for the end. Interesting strategy to change it up and leave it for last. 30 is the mark to beat from Jalen Green. We'll see if Oscar J. Basilin is able to do it. That one is off the rim. Moneyball is good. Oscar goes four for five to start us off. Now on to the second rack. This was his Moneyball Rack the previous round, and he is not missing. Firing on all cylinders as he goes five for five. Here's for Green. Mountain Dew ball. Bang! He greens it in. Oscar J. Basilin is hot. Right as I say that, he clanks that off the front of the rim. Oscar does not look invincible, but I think he's shooting well enough to beat 30 as he misses the money ball. That could change things. Here's the four-pointer. Greens it! That's a big make for Oscar J. Basilin, who struggled on that top of the key rack. Had to make the four-point shot, which he did, but he misses two in a row here. Oscar's really starting to struggle. No guarantee he beats Green, who, remember, scored a 30. So Oscar's going to need to make four of these to win. There's one. Here's two. Number three. Bang! For the win. Bang! One more. He's going to save it for the buzzer. Oscar J. Basilin, the three-point contest champion, splashes it home. Five for five on Money Ball Rack. As Tatum and Flame behind him, they look like giddy children waking up on Christmas. So Oscar J. Basilin wins the Mountain Dew three-point competition, defending his title from a year ago in front of his home fans. Pretty cool moment here for Oscar as he embraces the warm applause from his home crowd. And as we wrap up the three-point contest, we move on to the slam dunk contest. Oscar J. Basilin here has won the dunk contest two years in a row. However, he will not be partaking this year. But we have a different Seattle Sonic in the event. It'll be third-year wing Kyrell Story, who's having a great season for the Sonics. He'll be in the slam dunk contest this year, joined by a star-studded cast that includes Freeman Alexander of the Lakers, Arroyo Laponte of the Trailblazers, and first-time All-Star Jazz Jackson Jr. of the Indiana Pacers. So we're going to get here to the at t 5G Slam Dunk Contest in Seattle. Just like Oscar Dave Basilin did last year in the dunk contest, Chiral Stories rocking an old supersonic throwback jersey. So we're going to kick this year's Slam Dunk Contest off with Freeman Alexander of the Los Angeles Lakers looking to set the tone here early. Here's his first dunk! What? What the hell was that? That wasn't anything special at all. This is a slam dunk contest, dude. That dunk is so easy. I went outside and did that dunk on my own. Did I use a 10-foot rim? Absolutely not. But still, point remains. What a horrible dunk from Freeman Alexander, who gets 29 points. That'll bring us to Arroyo Laponte of the Trailblazers here. Hopefully he can do better. No, not really. I mean, that's just a simple reverse dunk. I've seen people do that in-game. Come on, where's the creativity? Again, I went outside and did that dunk on my own. I'll admit that dunk was a little bit harder, but I think I did the super cam celebration a little bit better than he did as he gets a 23. What an embarrassing start to the slam dunk contest. I think if I'm able to do the dunk, then it's automatically a bad dunk. So that'll bring us to Kyrell's story. Hopefully he can do a little bit better as he throws it up and goes for the windmill. Yeah, I don't think I'm able to do that. I think that dunk's a little bit harder. A great dunk here for Cairo Story going up there, throwing it down with the left hand. He's not a lefty. That's impressive. As we look at the replay here again, absolutely beautiful. The left-handed windmill in slow motion. 
as he ends up with a 36. That feels kind of low. I mean, if you're going to be handing Freeman Alexander at 29 for just tapping the ball in, I feel like Kyrell Story should get like an 100. So that'll bring us to Jazz Jackson, the best player here, although he didn't average 27 in the finals. Kyrell Story did, but that's neither here nor there. So here's Jackson. What does he have planned? He goes for the windmill. I mean, I guess that's cool. I mean, that wasn't as good as Kyrell Story's windmill. Story threw it up. He did it with his offhand, and Story's was a lot more powerful. This was a simple windmill that I've seen, again, players do in-game pretty easily, but despite that, the judges give him a 43. How is that dunk better than Kyrell Story's? I don't get that at all. I mean, are we just handing out 8s and 9s for 3 for crying out loud? An embarrassing start to the slam dunk contest. Three horrible dunks and a pretty good one from Kyrell Story, who should be winning, but whatever. So now we get to the second and final round of the slam dunk contest. Hopefully this one for Freeman Alexander is better than his first. Well, it was better. I mean, that's not, like, crazy, but it's better. And honestly, after that first dunk, that's really all we can ask for as he goes for a nice little reverse here underneath the basket. Okay, that was actually pretty good. He gets a 44. That feels a little bit high, but... I guess it is fair to put it 15 points ahead of his first dunk. But still, 44 does feel a little generous. So that'll bring us to Arroyo Laponte here, his second and final dunk of the day. He's a big dude, 6'10". He's like 250. He's built like a tank. But he's quick, and obviously he can get up there as his second dunk. Okay, that was pretty nice. Not gonna lie. He goes for the lefty windmill, pretty much what Kyrell Story did, but with a little less pizzazz. So for creativity, it's not that exciting but the dunk itself is pretty cool going for the tomahawk slam as he gets a 42 so that'll bring us to chiral story who needs at least a 37 on this dunk to defeat freeman alexander we'll see what story has up his sleeve here as he goes to the top of the key gonna run this one up and story goes for the 360 windmill that's the best dunk of the night without a doubt what a play for K -K -K chiral story Again, going with the left hand. Hopefully the judges give him some bonus points for using the offhand as we get a good look here above the rim. Just an absolute beauty. And he gets a 38, barely edging out Freeman Alexander. That deserves way higher than a 38. Come on. That was nice. So that'll bring us to Jazz Jackson. He's got to score at least a 31, 32. I think if he scores a 32, he'll pass Kyrell Story. That should be pretty easy. Jackson, certainly the favorite here as he goes for a nice windmill. Okay. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. He goes for the bow and arrow celebration. That might be right on the fringe. Will it be enough to defeat Kyrell Story's final score? Again, Jackson needs a 32, and he gets a 30. So this means Kyrell Story narrowly wins the slam dunk contest, beating Jazz Jackson by just one, and beating Freeman Alexander by just one. That might have been the worst slam dunk contest ever. Chiral Story is the only guy who tried, but you know what? A win's a win, even though he barely won it. So that'll bring us to the All-Star game. Of course, we do not have any All-Stars, which is just blasphemous to me. Oscar and Buzz should both be there. And sure enough, Team LaMelo, without LaMelo Ball, ends up beating Team Giannis with an MVP performance of 24-6 and six from Trey Young. Giannis and Zion each had 25 apiece. And as I go down, look who played. Oscar J. Basilin. He was an All-Star after all. He definitely was not on the All-Star roster. He didn't get drafted. So obviously he's an injury replacement, but I had no idea about this until after I simulated the game. So I'm happy he's an all-star because he 100% deserves it, but I would have liked to have known so I could have played with him, but oh well, it is what it is. So as we get ready for the final stretch of the year, this is what the rotation is going to look like without Buzz Wigginton and Josh Giddy for the foreseeable future. Teo Odiemi's gotten some playing time recently. He's actually been pretty good. So if he continues to play well, he may get more and more minutes. We have made it to the contract extension deadline. Both Buzz Wigginton and Oscar J. Basilin are restricted free agents. They are not eligible at this moment for contract extensions, but... They'll be back next year, whether it's on a new max or if they get offered from somebody else and we end up matching it. Long story short, they're both going to be here on long-term deals. Buzz Wigginton ends up returning after just two games after the All-Star break. So I think he only missed like six or seven with his hand injury when he was supposed to miss like four to six weeks. Right after that, however, Cam Reddish pinched a nerve in his back, so he will be out four to six weeks. And then Josh Giddy's knee is magically all better. 
He was supposed to return during the playoffs. He instead returns a month before the playoffs, which is a huge deal. So he ended up simulating a lot of games, and we did pretty well, only losing in four of them as we go to this matchup here against the Spirits, who are the best team in the Eastern Conference at 56 and 17. We're 55 and 16. We've officially clinched the playoffs for what it's worth. It was kind of inevitable, but it is official, which is cool. The Spirits have a four-headed monster led by Brandon Ingram, Deo Membenigba, Damian Lillard, and Tyler Hero. This team is way better than their squad last year, who took us to seven games in the NBA Finals. So I'm expecting a fun matchup here, and who knows, maybe this will be an NBA Finals preview. The Spirits and Sonics played earlier this season. St. Louis won by a lot at home, so we'll see how they do now here in Seattle. Josh Giddy with the early pick and roll, trying to get somebody open. It's the three-point contest champion, Oscar J. Basilin, who connects in the corner. 3-0 lead. Here's the slam dunk contest champion, Kyrell Story, looking to show off his skills as he goes for the nice mid-ranger on the move, and he gets that one to fall. Quick start for the Sonics here in the first minute, setting the tone as Lillard is blocked by Buzz Wickington. Here comes Seattle on the other end. It's Buzz Wickington inside has the mismatch and capitalizes the Sonics on fire to start the game off. Seattle has not been fully healthy for a while, and technically they're not because Cam Reddish is out, but Reddish is just a role player. All of the key guys are healthy, and it's really great to see. Ingram hits a nice three, finally getting St. Louis on the board as it's 5-9. to nine. And then Benigba with his first basket of the game. Deo Benigba, an all-star for the first time in his career as he blocks Kyrell's story. Here comes St. Louis on the other end. Gilbert gets it over to Ingram. He's off to a hot start, looking to keep that going as he gets the and one. Oscar J. Basilin called for the foul. Brandon Ingram so far is cooking. Ingram looking for more as he slams it down. Oscar tried to avoid the foul, and because of that, he played pretty bad defense. 16 to 11, Story with the screen for Buzz. Inside with the poster! Buzz Wigington annihilates Max Gilbert. That's revenge for last year in the finals when Max Gilbert locked up Buzz Wigington. An excellent poster slam as it's 16-13. St. Louis ahead. Brandon Ingram has it on the wing looking to drive inside. Annihilating Kyrell Story. Brandon Ingram's not the biggest guy, but he just took Kyrell Story to the woodshed. Hero blocked inside by Kyrell Story. And as you guys know, Seattle runs the floor in transition better than anyone. As Oscar J. Vasilin hits the corner three, he is 10 of Seattle's first 18 points. 20 to 18, here's Abraham Johnston Salazar with the slam. You can tell St. Louis wants to win this game. They are aggressive, driving to the basket. Tied at 22, Buzz with the crossover slam. What a play by Buzz Wigington with the cross slam as Lawson breaks Johnston Salazar's ankles and gets the poster. We've got a dunk show early on today. The rookie Lorenzo Lawson with a nasty crossover on Abraham Johnston Salazar, and the Sonics are back ahead. Now tied at 28, screen from Smith. Oscar J. Basilin at the buzzer! 15 points in the first quarter for Oscar J. Basilin. The Spirits are getting some bad flashbacks from when Oscar scored 41-9 and in Game 7 of the Finals last year. 30-31, to 31, Seattle ahead. Oscar J. Basilin on the screen, lobs it up for Jalen Smith! Great offense here from Seattle. Both offenses have been really good today. Brandon Ingram's probably been the best player on the floor as he makes a ridiculous shot over Uzoma Chukwu Mereji. Ingram and Oscar right now are just dealing. Both of them are playing out of their minds as Dame Dalla. Damian Lillard hits the corner three. The Spirits lead by four. They're off to a nice start here in the second quarter on both ends of the floor, particularly defensively. Time winding down on the shot clock. It's Justin Salazar. Beats the buzzer, and it's a seven-point lead, now a five-point lead. Here comes St. Louis on the break. Brandon Ingram connects on the triple. The St. Louis Spirits cannot miss right now from beyond the arc. 43-35. Lawson's pass is tipped over to Kyrell Story. Screen from Chukumareji. Story inside, makes the layup. The Sonics needed to get a basket there. The offense is really struggling ever since Oscar was taken out of the game earlier in the quarter. Josh Giddy has his pass tipped, gets it back over to Kyrell Story in the corner. Great passing from Josh Giddy, and it's out of bounds. Seattle gets the ball. They wouldn't do anything with it, though. St. Louis on the fast break. Brandon Ingram again. Brandon Ingram is dominating. He has been the man in the first half for St. Louis. 
Dumas is doubled. He gets it out to Josh Giddy, who hits the three. Both teams are shooting it very well from the perimeter as it's now 48-45. Two and a half to go in the first half. Hero is blocked by Jalen Smith. Seattle on the other end, a cross-court dime for Lorenzo Lawson, who ties it up with a triple. Nice shot for Lawson, who continues to have a fantastic rookie season. 55-52, St. Louis ahead. Oscar J. Basile at the final buzzer. His layup will not fall. Very competitive first half. However, it is the St. Louis Spirits who lead 55-52. Brandon Ingram with 20. Oscar J. Basile with 17. Both of those guys are playing very, very well for their respective teams as Buzz and Deo, the two stars, have both been quiet. Ingram picks up right where he left off to start the third quarter, hitting a wide open corner of three. He now has 23 on the day. 58-62, Damian Lillard, he wants some. He gets it over to Brandon Ingram. Ingram step back, somehow gets it to fall. Brandon Ingram is still dominating. 60-54, to Membanekba has the mismatch with Giddy on him, trapped inside. He has Ingram open at the top of the key. Brandon Ingram with eight quick points here in the second quarter. He's got 28 total. And the Spirits lead by nine. Very poor start to the quarter here for Seattle as Damian Lillard hits the top of the key shot. St. Louis now leads by 11. And the Sonics call a timeout. They've got to talk it over, figure out what's going on and what's going wrong. Here's Oscar J. Basilin with the left-handed poster. That's a good start. Putting a lot of power on that slam. Beautiful dunk. 65-56. Tristan Thompson inside. He is blocked. Just like what all the Kardashians did on his phone. They blocked him. On the other end, Cairo Story hits the three. Seattle on that transition mission. Again, nobody in the NBA runs the floor better than them. 65-59. Nice lob from Lawson over to Uzuma Chukwu-Mereji. The tides are turning a little bit. Oscar J. Basilin trying to get in on the fun as he floats in the layup. Nice play. 69-63, St. Louis maintaining a nice lead. Dumas over to Oscar, step back, back inside for Dumas, who gets the reverse layup. Good passing from both Dumas and Oscar as it's 69-67. The Spirits only lead by two. Time running down on the shot clock. It's Frank Kaminsky inside. Bad defense by Oscar, and Kaminsky brings it to four. 71-67, the Spirits ahead. Here's Oscar J. Basilin with the screen from Smith. Oscar gets some room, lets it fly. Oscar's starting to heat up. He's now got 24, that's a team high. The deficit is within one. Seattle's keeping this game close, but they have not led since early in the second quarter. Good job by Lillard to get open off the screen to put St. Louis back ahead by three. 73 to 70, under a minute left in the quarter. Here's Oscar J. Basilin with another slam. Derek Cedas Tornation wanted nothing to do with that play. He just let Oscar drive right inside for the easy slam. Three-point game. Lawson step back for the tie. Nice shot for Lorenzo Lawson. He's having another good game off the bench. 75-75 with under 20 seconds to go here in the quarter. Can St. Louis get the lead back? It's Hero driving inside over the extended arm of Jalen Smith. And the Spirits are ahead 77-75. Final moments of the quarter. Lawson on the screen from Smith. Heaves up a prayer and it will not fall. Three quarters down, one to go. We've got a good one. St. Louis leads 77-75 in an NBA Finals rematch from a year ago and possibly an NBA Finals preview this year with both teams currently as the number one seeds in their respective conferences. Quick dunk for Giddy to start us off here in the fourth. Tied at 77. St. Louis looking for the lead back. Spin move. Ingram is blocked by Smith. Seattle with it on the fast break. Kyrill Story looking to take it himself. Goes inside, makes the layup. Kyrill Story is at his best in the fourth quarter. This is Kyrill Story's time to shine as he falls asleep on defense and Brandon Ingram hits the open three. Maybe I spoke a little bit too soon. Seattle had the lead there for a whopping five seconds. Lawson inside, blocked by Ingram. Here comes St. Louis on the break. Brandon Ingram with the ball, coming off a great defensive play. Inside for Hero, who slams it down. Tyler Hero puts St. Louis back ahead by three. 82-79, Dumas, heavily contested three, won't fall. Rebounded by Buzz Wigington, who gets the put back. Buzz is at a quiet game, only 10-7. and seven. Deo Membenekbo has been even quieter. He only has six points and eight rebounds. Story loses it. It's stolen by Membenekbo. I guess I talked too soon. And then on the other end, it's Lillard with the dunk to put the Spirits back ahead by five with five and a half to go. Lillard's three, no good. Rebounded by Amemba Nakba, no good. Nice defense from Buzz. On the other end, here's Kyrill Story. Drives inside of the right and throws it down. The slam dunk contest champion with a dunk.
86-83. Here's Brandon Ingram. Time winding down on the shot clock. Guarded by Chukwu Mereji. He will pump fake in midair and make the shot. The Spirits are back ahead by five. 88-83. Here comes Oscar Java. Sealing with a mean poster. He didn't even touch Amen Benekba, yet he went flying down to the ground. And the Sonics bring it back to a one-score game. 88-85. Screen from Buzz. Oscar gets it back out to Buzz for three and the tie. Buzz has struggled today shooting the ball, but he gets that one to fall, and we're tied at 88. Ingram gets the lead right back. Terrible defense by Josh Giddy. He kind of overestimated that play. Two-point lead. Quickly, Seattle in transition ties it up off of a chance Dumas layup. Dumas in the game here in crunch time. Seattle views him as one of their five best players, and, well, he's playing like it. Buzz Wigginton takes Lillard to the cup and puts Seattle ahead 92 to 90 with two and a half to go. Here's Gilbert inside for the tie. It's good. Max Gilbert knocks this one up in 92. And the Sonics call a timeout with just over two minutes to go. Here's Oscar J. Basile looking for the lead in the corner for Kyrill Story. He's fouled. Number one rule of defense. Don't foul the jump shooter. Story would knock down all three three throws as Lillard is blocked by Buzz. Seattle with it on the other end. Here's Buzz inside for Story. Makes the layup. Draws the foul. And one for Kyrill Story, who again is dominating here in the fourth quarter. 92-98. It's Ingram. Guarded by Story at the top of the key. Drives inside, and he gets that one to fall. Brennan Ingram continues to dominate as it's a four-point game. Oscars passes tipped and stolen. Two-on-one opportunity. Lillard in the corner for Gilbert, who hits the three. Max Gilbert brings the lead within one. 97-98. Lawson over to Oscar. Screen from Buzz. Oscar J. Basilan drives it side, throws it down. Nice dunk for Oscar. He's got 30, and the Spirits lead by three. 97 to 100. Ingram inside. Nasty step back. Brandon Ingram cannot miss. And the lead is brought within one. Under 30 to go. Story 4-3! Cairo Story with 13 points here in the fourth quarter. And the Sonics lead by four. When in doubt, give the ball to number zero because he's going to give the defense more than zero regrets. Ingram is blocked. Back out to Lillard. His three no good. Rebounded by Story, who is quickly fouled by Gilbert. Cairo Story would make both three throws. It's a six-point game. Lillard for three. Hits it. So with one second to go, it's a three-point game. Maybe things can get interesting as long as the Sonics don't get cute and they should be fine. Don't let St. Louis get an opportunity to heave up a half-court shot. Buzz on the inbound gets to Story, who's fouled and would be greeted by MVP chance at the line. Personal foul, fourth team foul. Story would make both three throws as he has 17 points in the quarter. And the Sonics are going to take this one home. 107-102 is your final. What a win here for Seattle. And to be honest, I hope this is the NBA Finals matchup. We had seven great games of these teams fighting it out last year. And I think it would be even better. Both of these teams are better than they were a year ago. I think that would be an extraordinarily fun NBA Finals matchup. 30 for Oscar, 29 for Story. He was unbelievable in the fourth quarter. 15 and 10 for Buzz. For the Spirits, Ingram had 39. We could not stop him. He was a machine. 18 for Lillard, 13 and 12 for Hero. Deo Mbenekba was quiet. He only had six points on three of 10 shooting. Not good. So as it stands now, we have not clinched the number one seed, but we're very close. We're going to simulate these next three games. We win all three of them, and sure enough, we clinch the number one overall seed in the Western Conference. Normally, I would sit all of our guys, but I don't really want to do that quite yet. So we're going to simulate our next three games here. Kyrill Story, Story left ankle. It's not serious, but we're going to shut him down for the year. There's no reason to play him. I was going to keep Story in the lineup the rest of the season because he's played in every game, and that's a big accomplishment. But with this injury, it's just not worth risking it. In our next three, we went 2-1, and one, beating Portland by 2, losing to Toronto by 1, 
and beating the Nuggets by 63. It would make a lot of sense to sit Buzz, Oscar, and Giddy for the rest of the year, but I don't want to do that. Giddy is so close to averaging a triple-double. I want to make sure he can do that. And then Buzz and Oscar are playing for all NBA spots, and I don't want those guys to lose out on that by missing a game or two at the end of the year. So because of that, we're not going to shut down any of those guys as we simulate through the rest of the season. Josh Giddy grabbed 18 boards in the first game. He's averaging triple-double. So after the Portland matchup, I sat him down for the rest of the year. Lorenzo Lawson's going to get an opportunity to start as we simulate our final three games. And we would only go one and two, but it's not going to matter because we're still the number one seed. LaMelo Ball wins MVP. Masako Inyanko of the Montreal Royals wins Rookie of the Year. Derek Cedas Tornation, Sixth Man of the Year. Giannis wins Depoy. And Dikenji Mukwamu wins Most Improved Player. I'm very happy for him. The former Sonic, very well deserved. Jake Thomas of the Spirits wins Coach of the Year. And Moochie Fresh of the Spirits wins Executive of the Year. Moochie Fresh, that's his name. Here are the All-NBA teams. No Sonics on the first team. On the second team, we get Buzz Wigginton. Very well deserved. I didn't think they were going to give it to him because he's missed like a fourth of the season, but the team was so much worse without him, so he 100% deserves it and has certainly played to all NBA second team standards. Unfortunately, we did not get Oscar on the third team. I was hoping he would make one, but he did not. The only other All-NBA member was Lorenzo Lawson, who ended up making the All-Rookie second team. Most seasons, his numbers are good enough for the All-Rookie first team, but this rookie class was just so good that he's on the second team. So we are now in the postseason. We're going to do a quick little recap of our team's statistics, and then we're going to figure out who we're going to play against in the first round. We were, of course, led by Oscar and Buzz. Oscar had a career year. He made the All-Star team for the first time with 27, 6, and 5. Buzz was also great, making an All-NBA team for the third time in his four-year career. Kyrell Story had a career year as well, averaging nearly 21 a game. Josh Giddy coming over from the Thunder. He averaged a triple-double. He was very, very good. We knew these four guys were studs, and they were awesome. The two unsung heroes of this team, in my opinion, Lawson and Dumas. They were both our sixth men, in a sense. Lawson was the sixth man because he was our instant offense off the bench. He was the best playmaker on the bench, the best scorer. But I also view Dumas as our sixth man because he was a Swiss Army knife. He started like half of the games this year, whether it was because of injury or whatever other reasons. Dumas emerged onto the scene last year in the playoffs and he hasn't really slowed down at all. Dumas is also one of just two players on the roster who played in all 82 games this year. Big accomplishment. Chukumareji was solid. Reddish was solid. Smith was solid. Jalen Smith was the other player who played in all 82 games. Maisaki Moon had some good flashes too, but he's probably not going to play a whole lot in the playoffs. He just wasn't consistent enough. We're going to run a nine-man rotation in the postseason with our top nine players. We're fully healthy for the first time since like January, so that's pretty cool. We're going to simcast these playing games now, figure out who we're going to face off against in the first round. We've got the seventh seed game between the Nuggets and the Thunder. The winner will be the seventh seed and play the Lakers in the first round, and it'll be Oklahoma City, who wins by 54 points. Giannis dropped a triple-double. SGA and Buana had double-doubles. Fred Flame led the Nuggets with 28 points, but it was ultimately not enough. So they will now play in the eighth seed game against either Sacramento or New Orleans. The winner of this game will play Denver. The loser is eliminated. The Pelicans started off on fire, and they did not miss a beat as they beat the Kings by 30. In Sacramento's defense, they were without Tyrese Halliburton, who is their best player, but... Yeah, they got absolutely steamrolled. Zion Williamson and R.J. Barrett both absolutely dominated, combining for 70 points and 26 rebounds. So that means we will play one of Denver or New Orleans, depending on who wins this game. The Pelicans start off hot, but then Denver comes storming back in the third quarter. They win by 24 points. Fred Flame with 37 on 22 field goal attempts, 21 of which we're from three, so it looks like we'll be playing the Denver Nuggets in the first round of the playoffs, despite a 43 bomb from R.J. Barrett. For most of the season, the Nuggets were one of the five best teams in the Western Conference. They are not playing good basketball as of recent, however, as they've gone on a massive skid. They even lost to us by 63 points when we were without Kyrell Story, Cam Reddish, and I think we were missing another player too, so... I mean, they're not playing good basketball right now, but we know they have the capability to be very good. Their best players are Michael Porter Jr., former Sonic Emmanuel Quickly, but I'm most worried about Fred Flame, who really played well in both of the playing games. He led Denver in scoring both times. 
So even though the Nuggets have struggled as of recently, I'm not going to take them lightly because when this team is gelling, they can be one of the best teams in Western Conference. And I could see this being a very competitive first round series. So that's going to wrap up the episode. Hope everybody enjoyed. Next time, we're going to start the playoffs. Should be fun. Peace out.